Welcome to the Smart Factory. session of today and even of our webinar week uh, so it's coming to an end after after this it was very exciting um, so I'm already saying to everyone who is watching the replays if you wouldn't been able to catch all of the episodes or uh, any uh, episodes that are of interest to you you can uh, you will be able to see them in the replays uh, uh, the beginning of next week we will uh, have them online but without any further ado uh, today I'm, uh, I'm hosting with my colleagues uh, Morten and Eve uh, our guest uh, David uh, Benoit from uh, from Grafok um, maybe just uh, a small introduction to uh, David David is the the advice uh, marketing and communications manager from uh, Grafok and uh, Grafok, uh, for those who wouldn't uh, know, because it's a Belgian, uh, Belgian Flemish or organization, uh, they uh, are an uh, official uh, instance that uh, actually uh, give advice and also subsidies to uh, some of the uh, printing companies uh, in Belgium. Uh, but maybe I'll, I'll have uh, David introduce himself uh, briefly and before we, we head on to the topic of the day, which is uh, the, the headline is Employees 4.0 for, uh, for uh, Print 4.0. So it was also raised already by a lot of people uh, in, uh, during this week that, of course, technology and so on is very important. But of course, without the people and the right staff uh, to be able to uh, to work this uh, this new technology, um, that's all, of course uh, a big challenge as well. So uh, yes, uh, David, maybe uh, in, in 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 short, can you introduce yourself uh, to us? So good morning, Jacques, and uh, also thank you, uh, Inkish, for uh, for the invitation to talk about uh, the subject today. Uh, so my name is. David Benoit. I'm uh, working for about uh, 15 years at uh, Grafok, what we call uh, a training fund, especially for the um, uh, for Flanders, so the Dutch uh, speaking part of uh, of Belgium. And uh, we are a non-profit organization uh, working for, let's say, for the first of all for the for the uh, graphic industry, the print media industry, but we also have uh, contacts with uh, with uh, schools, of course. Uh, we do uh, we follow up of uh, unemployed people who are on a graphic training. We we do the the intensive uh, follow up. So there are a lot of things we, we we do. We have a great network, of course. So I think we are, we are uh, an organization who has contact uh, all over the. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, as I can add, um, you also gather, and that's. Uh, one of the one of the reasons why uh, it's very interesting to to be talking to you uh, your organization organization sorry also gathers a lot of data and information on um, on uh, let's say the evolutions uh, in uh, employment unemployment mm -hmm. and uh, the statistics uh, of this all and the the impacts that uh, new uh, technologies and uh, events uh, like also COVID, for example, has mm -hmm. on, 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 on our printing business uh, in regard to uh, the workers and, and staff. So, which is very important here today. And um, so maybe we can, uh, can start uh, your presentation and mm -hmm. afterwards, and even in between, we can then uh, raise questions uh, on the topic, uh, as, we, as we said, uh, that print 4.0 is in need of probably new types of uh, profiles, uh, job mm -hmm. profiles. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe if you can shed a little light on the actual situation. And there I have to stress, and that's important to say, even that we are uh, shedding light on, on, on Belgian uh, mm -hmm. statistics and, and, mm -hmm. and Belgian figures, 
uh, it'll be more or less uh, the same situation in, in, in Europe, all over Europe, as well mm -hmm. in France. We have spoken uh, yesterday eve and, and during the weeks with a lot of uh, captains of industry in France, and they come up with the same uh, the same problems and they, they tell the same story. So it's even if it's Belgian numbers, uh, mm -hmm. they're applicable throughout Europe. So it's good at least that we have one benchmark uh, where everyone can 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 go by with. So yes, let's maybe start the presentation, uh, David, and uh, I'll uh, I'll hand the word uh, over to you. All right. So first of all, I think I have to say, uh, industry uh, four point or o or or uh, print four point o. In fact, it's it's not new. It let's say that it started around uh, two thousand twelve, and some call it uh, the fourth industrial revolution. Um, but I think for the for the graphic business and maybe also for for other businesses, it's not that new uh, because if you look at uh, what happened. Uh, the last 30, 40 years in, in technology, technological uh, evolution. We had the evolution of, of offset printing, of flexo printing. Uh, we had uh, the whole, let's say, startup of, of desktop publishing. We went from analog to, to, to digital. Uh, we have large format printing. Uh, uh, GDF entered the business. And the last uh, new technology, I guess, is the, the whole uh, thing about, about nano printing. So, Let's say, in fact, it's not that new. Uh, and the, the, the baseline for today, uh, training today for tomorrow, it's, it's uh, very actual, even, uh, it's even an obligation to, to keep on learning every day. Because we, we talk about uh, tomorrow, but in, in fact, tomorrow started already today and, and even yesterday. So we, it, it's very important to, to, to keep everybody uh, up to date. Yeah. Um, and for us as, as a training fund, we also say if, don't deploy only on technical trainings, but also the evolution, the, the um, take efforts and also in, in uh, soft skill trainings. Uh, for example, uh, language and IT skills are today as important as, as other, even uh, communication or, or uh, even leadership trainings are very, very important. Uh, and let's say that we hear uh, almost every day about new technologies, which is very good. Uh, but sometimes I have the, the idea that we, that we forget or the people who have to work uh, with all these new technology. So um, I think that that's an important uh, thing. Uh, but even important to get an, an overview of the, of the whole situation uh, or, or the actual uh, situation, I have some uh, numbers or some facts gathered. Um, and I try to explain them. If we look at the number of companies over the last 10 years, we have a reduction uh, here in Belgium of about uh, 41, let's say 41, or more than 40%. So that's a lot. Um, the reasons why, I guess it's almost for, for every uh, uh, business the same. There is bankrupt of companies that happens, unfortunately, but it happens. Uh, we have also the tendency of uh, companies that merge now um, uh, faster than, than predicted. Um, there are companies who won't invest in new technology or, or machines are too expensive or they have no follow up if it's a family company. Uh, but I think the, the, the most important reason why is the evolution in technology? So, and if you look at the, the number of, of employees over the last 10 years, there, also, there is also a reduction uh, of 38%, which is a lot, I think, for the, for the same reason as I, as I mentioned. And our prediction is uh, that for the uh, next four or five years, there will be a decline of 4% in uh, the employees. Mm -hmm. Also very important is if you look at uh, the number of people who work in, in a company, and for us, 92% of the companies have less than 50 employees. And if we look further, 72% uh, of the companies have less than 
10 employees. So that is uh, a very important thing to, to take care about if you talk about trainings, if you talk about uh, uh, HR, etc. If you have a lot of small companies, it becomes more and more difficult to train people, to give them the time to train uh, and to, to keep them uh, up to date. But if you look at um, 2019, we saw that about uh, more than half of the, the employees followed a, a training. So 55% uh, followed the training, which, which is good, I think. Um, I have some numbers about the age, uh, which is also an, an important fact. Um, if you look at, uh, it's called PC 130, let's say that's the blue color population of our employees. Um, one, one on three is older than 50 years. Um, if you look at the other side, only less than 5% of the employees is younger than 25 years old. So that means that we, that we have a quite an old uh, population of our of our uh, employees, uh, which means, and that's um, a huge number. Uh, we expect that over the next five years, thirty six percent of the employees will be retired. So that's uh, it's a huge number. Yes, that's a lot of knowledge that leaves the uh, our uh, print media industry. It's uh, something to, I, I think that a lot of companies uh, do not realize at this moment uh, what to expect the next uh, the next four years. So yeah, there uh, will be, uh, be a huge impact because yeah. if, if I may, if I see these numbers that you, that you give us here, uh, mm -hmm. Eve, I think for you as well, if you can see that in Belgium anyway, one out of three, that are working actually in the printing industry is, is older than 50 and, and only 4% or 5 is younger than 25. So it, as you say, it'll be a, a huge problem. Maybe it's not visible straight away today because mm -hmm. everyone is in full production and it's, it's, it's going. But um, yeah, do you, do you see that same, those same numbers in France, Yves? Do you have that, yeah. an idea of that? Yes, absolutely. It, 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 it's very similar. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, and we discussed earlier to, uh, during our first session this morning, that Industry 4.0, uh, uh, regarding uh, competencies and, uh, and or capabilities, uh, uh, will be um, uh, um, um, made uh, between orders uh, competencies with new uh, uh, capabilities, with mm -hmm. new uh, competencies. That's uh, the reason it's a, a, a huge uh, issue to... Uh, yeah, to it'll be a huge gap, huh? Yes. It'll be yes. a huge gap. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yes, David, so yeah, yeah. continue, please. So, yeah, the job offers, then again, uh, yeah. to okay. stipulate it's Flanders and Brussels. So mm -hmm. it, it, it gives a good indication, yeah? Yes, we, with, with our... Um, uh, a part of, of Grafok called uh, Print Media Jobs. We, we, we gather every day, we look at, at the, the job offers we, we receive from, from, from the internet, from search engines, uh, but also from companies that, that contact us who are looking for, for uh, people. Uh, today, at this moment, today, we have about uh, 710 uh, job offers, uh, especially it's not specific for, for the for our graphic business, but some if you look at, at the, the, the function of graphic design, that's not only for the graphic business, but also for its, its uh, not really for, a lot, or, yeah. Yeah, for a lot of uh, for industries, but um, but also uh, print, print and post press operators, digital print operators, and uh, surprising, of course, is, is also uh, a lot of job offers in administration. So uh, I have. Um, uh, some more detail here in, in this slide. Excuse uh, me, uh, yes. regarding your offer into your uh, uh, your job offer. Yes. Um, uh, I'm a little bit uh, surprised that I'm sure you you are uh, you receive I, uh, or, or the job offer in mainly 
uh, about IT, IT uh, de de developers or uh, in manufacturing, uh, uh, manufacturing uh, uh, knowledge um, within the, within this company. Do you receive this kind of uh, uh, of job uh, offers today in Belgium, in, in France, or when I I check as uh, the new profile for uh, mainly uh, online printers. Uh, of, often we uh, we discover uh, offer for uh, IT developers IT, or, yeah. or, or lean lean manager uh, yeah. mm -hmm. in order to to uh, to solve the, uh, and to uh, uh, streamline their their workflow. Mm -hmm. So David, so, maybe sorry yeah. to cut in. But maybe the, that number of 710 job mm -hmm. offers today mm -hmm. is that only blue collar? Because no, no, uh, no, 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 the no. profiles that Eve is describing obviously mm -hmm. will be white collar, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. In, in Belgium, we have uh, uh, the two profiles of white and blue collar uh, employees. But uh, no, the job offers we receive, and I have also, I, of course, I have to say, we don't receive everything. Uh, there must be. I'm sure there must be a lot of more job offers, but it, it, it's a part of what, what we receive, what we see on, on, on social media, on, on, uh, on LinkedIn, on what we receive from companies, uh, etc. So it's, it's going from, from all kinds of, of profiles, uh, and of course, IT profiles are, are also, uh, um, we also receive that kind of, uh, of job offers. So it's very different. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Okay, so if we um, if you look a bit more in, in detail, uh, so we are doing uh, we're doing this for some several years. But um, in for this year, because it's quite a special year uh, due to to COVID nineteen, uh, we did two extra uh, uh, search. Um, uh, what what situation is on on uh, or, or what the impact is uh, from COVID nineteen on, on the job offers? So we did a first um, uh, investigation in May and now it's in uh, August. And if you look at, at the first yellow uh, recti rectangle, we can see uh, for twenty twenty we received about uh, less than uh, less than eighteen more job offers than two thousand nineteen. So. David, yes. David, can I just uh, cut in a bit? Yes. Uh, Eve, do you understand everything clearly? Uh, because I have a little distortion in the back. Um, not sure what it's what it's uh, due. To, it's clear. But, uh, it's clear. It's clear. Thank you. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. So, in, in the first uh, rectangle, you see the. The total of job offers we received until the end of August, you see 660 uh, job offers compared with 2019, 560, 86 uh, job offers. So for, for 2020, it looks that we have more job offers. Mm -hmm. um, but if we look at the, 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 the second um, uh, overview, uh, from let's say from the start of Corona until my end of uh, August, we saw uh, a reduction of about 13% uh, of job offers. So that means, uh, if we, our interpretation of this is that uh, we're quite sure that 2020 started quite well for, for uh, our industry, but it's quite logic. Um, uh, during the, the, the Corona period, we have less job offers. And we think that for the next month, it will, uh, it will decrease it will continue to, to decrease. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's not quite clear to me the situation. Uh, if we look at the, 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 the number of uh, function, uh, we see uh, an increase in the situation. Uh, also, in the digital operators, it's going from two to uh, and uh, and it's almost almost equal equal. So it there's it, it, it also some also some information what is what is going on going on. Um, um, if you go to to the to the right, that's 
that uh, let's say our party, our part. If if you look at if you look at the different level, different level uh, where training is needed, um, first of all, education schools. Uh, we believe uh, that dual trajects will be the future for uh, for education. It's not not the only part, but it's an important part uh, in the evolution uh, in education, uh, if it depends on, on us. So last year, uh, some schools started with uh, dual trajects, and maybe I have to explain that. Dual trajects are uh, um, trajects with about 20 hours of practice, uh, and a part of that is on uh, is in the companies itself. So it's, um, we believe, especially for, for the, the operator jobs, we think that that is one of the main trajects we have to, to follow. Uh, at this moment, uh, two trajects already exist. That's for a digital print operator and for a web, web offset and flexo operator. These, uh, at this moment, they exist. Um, and we are developing uh, some other profiles, uh, especially for large format operator, print operator, and Postgres operator. And also we believe that uh, to keep teachers up to date is very important. Uh, a part of our budget, we spent it on training also for uh, for teachers to keep them to keep them up to date. Um, the second level, um, which is also very important, uh, is the unemployed people at, at this moment who follow uh, a training uh, at Vidya Bay. That's an organization who keeps um, who keeps them busy with, with uh, the unemployed people. Uh, and also here, our vision is uh, to, first of all, uh, focus on, on the basics, uh, also do uh, a good screening of the un unemployed people before to start the, the, the training. So look if they have the, um, uh, the, the skills needed on, on technical page, but also attitude is a, is a very, very important uh, issue. And then, uh, educate them on, on the basics, and uh, we believe that uh, training on the job, what we call in Dutch werkplek leren, uh, training on the job is uh, also very important. And uh, uh, added on that, uh, an intense follow-up is uh, the best guarantee for uh, for the job. Uh, at this moment, uh, Grafok, we do for about uh, 11 years, we do uh, intensive uh, follow up of, of trainees in uh, in companies who are who are learning a job, and we know that 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 is one of the most important success factors. Um, so, as I already said, the technical skills and attitude are uh, also very important, not for the unemployed people only, but for everyone. And then, I, share, I share I share your point of view because uh, uh, I not. Um, as uh, predicted um, competencies uh, given by the world economic forums, as they say that one, the first uh, uh, top 10 skills uh, will be uh, first complex problem solving, two, critical thinking, three, creativity, mm -hmm. four, people management, five, coordination with others, six, emotional intelligence, Seventh, decision making. Eight, service orientation. Nine, negotiation. And at last, ten, cognitive flexibility. It's true that the culture um, and open minded uh, technical skills and attitude are really important. Uh, I share really the point of view, and it, it is in line with this. Uh, uh, ten uh, top skills uh, predicted by the World Economic Forum. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, those, let's say, maybe it's, it's called soft skills competences, but but they are also very, very, very important. If, mm. if that is not okay, um, it, that can give some some problems for for the, for the job you are learning for. Um, but we also have uh, a third level, and for uh, Grafo, it's let's say it's it's more. Uh, the most important level for us because the, the employees are of course that these are our core, core business um it, it's uh 
it's very classic, but the triple L or uh, lifelong learning is very important. Important uh, formal trainings, uh, but also informal trainings uh, on, on the job, uh, very important. Um, and we also uh, mentioned uh, uh, internal trainings. Uh, let's say that the, that are the informal trainings. We believe that that people who follow a, a mentorship training, uh, it's better to 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 share their knowledge uh, on, on to other people. So, for example, if you have a print operator and he has to explain uh, some information, he has to explain his job to. A, a, a trainee or, or a new employee entering the company, we believe that if you follow the a mentorship training, he will be more stronger in his venture and it will be more easier to uh, to, to share his knowledge to, to other people. Uh, so internal trainings are important, but of course, uh, trainings from suppliers are as well as important. Um, it can be trainings if a new uh, machine enters the company, but also for uh, existing existing uh, machines. Uh, from time to time, some training from a supplier is very important, and sometimes it's uh, an obligation uh, to follow um, trainings. I, I think about uh, HP uh, employees or people who, have, who will work with uh, HP machines. They have to. Uh, we get the, the, the first and the second level in, in their uh, training center in, in Barcelona to uh, to allow them to operate with, with those machines. And also here, um, as well as at the un unemployed people, uh, technical and soft skill trainings are uh, often very important. So um, what does Grafo do for, for those um, color people in, in the companies. We have two things. On the left side, uh, we have an overview of the training incentives we give. So you can you can see, uh, depending on the number of uh, employees who are working at your company in, in the, the left uh, column, um, it can, the, the, the amount of, of the, the premium can be from 1,500 euro up to 11,250 euros that uh, companies can get from from us uh, if they uh, train their people in the company to make the people, of course, to make the people stronger in the, their job. It's all also an advantage for the company, of course, but it's also an advantage for uh, the client if we have well-trained people in uh, operating. So uh, it's depending on, on several levels. Um, level two, for, exa for example, is if a company has a, a training plan uh, for the company, they get more money. Uh, we also have the third level that's for uh, companies who have uh, uh, who are qualified by us as being um, uh, an energy company. Uh, at this moment, we have 135 of those companies, and we have uh, a fourth level. If a company is investing in uh, innovative, unique, or high-tech uh, machines or techniques, they can get the, the fourth level. So it's going up and up, um, depending on what level you get. Uh, to give you an idea, last year, 2019, uh, it's not completely final, but at this moment we spent about 150,000 euro that goes back to the companies, the companies who uh, invested in their um, employees. On the other hand, uh, the green uh, uh, image, um, we also give uh, training vouchers uh, with an amount of 250 euros to, uh, to the employees themselves who follow um, a job related training. So, for example, if you have a print operator who follows uh, the training of Photoshop um, and he pays himself for this training, he can get uh, to about uh, up to 250 euros a year from Grafok. So, that's in a nutshell what, what we do uh, to stimulate uh, to stimulate 
people and companies to, to invest in, in training. I have a last question uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic. For, for you, uh, e-learning training, um, such as color management uh, or other uh, kind of uh, training? Well, of course, online training, it's, um, it exists for several years. Uh, you have believers, you have non-believers, uh, but I had... Um, there was a post today of uh, uh, the, the minister of, of work today uh, that mentioned that uh, about more than uh, more than three uh, um, people followed uh, a training online. Um, so it's 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 rising uh, also due to COVID nineteen. Uh, but not everything is possible to learn online, of course. Of course. So there must be a good balance between uh, learning on the job. By, by the people of the company or otherwise by uh, by suppliers um, and we believe of course that online training can be an, an added, uh, added uh, value on on the whole training process mm. Thank you. Uh, David uh, as, as you were saying like I love the, the term LLL like the, the long life learning curve yeah. that, that, that you need um, but in to, to your knowledge uh in in the belgian uh, printing industry eve also touched on it because everyone now thinks yeah, technology is going that high up so the skill set of let's say the people that already are employed within our industry they will have to step up i guess you know uh, and then in correlation with the numbers you gave at the beginning of your presentation saying that probably in five years time We'll have a lot of people going and there's only like small numbers coming in mm -hmm. to your knowledge or your idea who will be replacing them because if i see these numbers uh it won't be like the 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 the, the people or the the pupils that come out of technical or professional uh, education mm -hmm. uh, so there will be a huge gap of course there will be natural selection i'll, I'll call it uh, because we'll, we'll probably need need, need less uh, people to drive the the, the industry 4.0 smart mm -hmm. factories because a lot of it will be automated but in my mind still though there will will be left with it with a huge gap who do you think will will uh, fill those shoes because we'll have a problem on our hands i guess will it be like more it orientated guys or do you think it will still be uh, people that come out of the, the technical schools or uh, that's another subject we'll maybe touch on it mm -hmm. later because in belgium they just decided to pull the plug on uh, mm -hmm. on, on the technical uh, technical education but to come back to the first question who do you think will fill the gap because we'll end up with a problem it's a very good question, and I guess uh, it's not only for, for the print media business as well. Uh, it's for a lot of, of businesses who have the, the same problems. Um, our population is, is aging, so uh, and I must say we, we don't have the we don't have uh, let's say uh, the, the correct answer. We don't have it. Um, so. That problem is is not as new as well, because we, we uh, as long as I work at at Krafok, uh, companies are still looking for for print operators for post press operators. There are not enough people um, in these jobs, uh, and it will that will be become a more huge problem for for the next years, I guess. So um, people who are leaving the next years uh, about thirty six percent. Uh, who will get any on retirement that's a lot of knowledge that's leaving the companies uh how to solve it uh i, I don't have the real answer i don't have it uh and i guess the next years we, we will see how to, how to solve it uh you don't uh, need always to have people from 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 schools but uh, that's why we um, put a lot of effort on on uh, unemployed people to, to teach them to um, to have to give them a, a good follow up 
uh, and to train them uh, on on the job mm-hmm. in the company. So uh, uh, in combination with with the job offers, uh, we see that at this moment that's a good uh, a good project. Uh, it's very successful at this moment. So I think that's one of the the possible ways to 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 follow. But mm-hmm. it's a, it's a difficult question. Yes, indeed. Yeah, and I do I do see what you said earlier on that you were also like giving aid to to companies mm-hmm. that have staff but maybe not with the right right uh, skill set, mm-hmm. um, and that you're also aiding them uh, with a kind of subsidy if they buy, uh, let's say. Uh, um, if if they buy a new machine from HP or or, or Sycon mm-hmm. or anyone else, and those vendors now they they have as part of their package like also uh, some some school some schooling of of those of those staff or maybe mm-hmm. people that want to get up uh, to get up a bit uh, to, to to up their skills. So, but as you said, it's mostly very expensive. Uh, um education uh, and training that these uh, vendors uh, are, are giving so in mm-hmm. that case can those companies apply for all of the stuff they want to uh, give this education or, or or as you said there are limits of course uh, and is in your point of view uh, are companies now uh, asking more this type of um, let's say training on the job and uh, when they buy machines or or is it just uh, for the machines they already installed in their companies or is it mainly when they buy new equipment? Well, f- first of all, uh, people always talk about uh, a training cost. Uh, of course, it's not for free. Training is not for free. Uh, is it a cost? Yeah, maybe. But it, uh, it always, always uh, gives uh, a great value, added value on the people, on the company, on the clients to have uh, well-educated people. For us, that that's quite clear. So, um, is there a limit? Yes. Uh, it, in in the the premise that uh, uh, Grafo gives, yes. Uh, and it's for us, all kind of trainings are acceptable. So, I mean, uh, if you have a leadership training. Or you have uh, a training for a new digital press, or you have a, a new uh, web offset press, uh, or someone has to learn uh, German, English, whatever. Uh, all those kind of trainings are for us. Uh, the the value of this training is is equal for us. So all kind of trainings, almost <laughs> uh, all trainings are accepted uh, for the graphic. Uh, for the companies to give them uh, a, a premium. Okay, great. So it's not only uh, just to to strengthen both the company and the workers uh, and the client uh, and the client as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I also have a question, um, David. A wonderful present. I can hear you. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Can you hear me? Can you no, hear me now? Back. You're yes, back now. Yeah. It's apparently my uh, my electronic. Uh, Headset that doesn't work. No, David, a great presentation, uh, uh, very enlightening, and uh, gave some good ideas as well. Uh, one of the things I am a little bit curious about that does not relate so much to what you were talking about, but maybe to your um, work on a more overall perspective. Um, when you when you communicate with your, uh, is it a, it's a member organization, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you communicate with these uh, uh, people that apply for these uh, services that you offer, what is your response rate? I mean, can you send out to uh, 300 members and then you get 300 answers or you have to really poke them? I wish. <laughs> uh, well, we have to be honest about that. So uh, first of all, we, we um, communicate with the companies. Uh, it has to do because we, we don't have all the data of the people, the blue collar uh, people who work in the companies. Uh, so if you contact the, the companies, uh, it's a physical uh, visit. 
by, by telephone, by email, by newsletter, by uh, website, social media, whatever. So we, we have a, a, a wide range of communication tools. Uh, but I have to be honest, the response can be better. Uh, a lot of companies invest in, in training, invest in new machines. It costs a lot of money. Uh, somewhere they know they can re, uh, get some money off of Grafok, but most of the people, for, for one or other reason, they forget to, mm -hmm. to contact us, not only for, for, for the premies, but we have a, a whole range of sure. services yeah, yeah, we yeah. offer for free. Most of them are for free for the companies. So I should say uh, they, have, they, they have to use it more and more what, what we offer. The, the knowledge mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 if they are looking for a, a print operator, if they have a job offer, it, it would be good that they contact us and that we can see what we can do for them. Mm. So, the reason the reason I'm asking is because um, at the Label Expo last year, mm -hmm. um, I got a little bit unpopular with the trade media in Europe, to be honest, because I said that, including English, I'm so I'm not I'm I'm not saying that we are any better than any, but I said that the, I. I I think that one of the problems we uh, as an industry have is that we have a lot of knowledge from organizations, from uh, uh, from media, from consultants, from uh, a lot of different so vendors, of course, a lot of different sources. But there seems to be some kind of communication gap because we end up in a situation where uh, mass communication doesn't apply to the owners of the printing companies. Uh, uh, letters, uh, direct mail doesn't apply to people. It seems that we have all the same addresses and contact details of all, everybody. But apparently we are not communicating to the heart and the brain of the of the owners of the printing companies. And I'm wondering, because I mean, as I think that our relationship with, with you, uh, thanks to uh, Jacques, is of course pretty new. But we have since six years been working uh, really trying to in an unbiased environment educating the industry but mm -hmm. the problem is that we have the same problems as everybody else we don't get the reach i mean i think that intergraph say there's like 112,000 printing companies in europe with about 600,000 people working in the industry in europe mm -hmm. and there's no media that have even close to any of the 100,000 printing companies and when you talk to the vendors not even close to have like one vendor appro uh, uh, able to uh, pre uh, approach everybody. So mm -hmm. I was just curious if you see the same problem from an organization perspective that you also have the same addresses as uh, Shark and Eve and I have, but we don't get through. <laughs> Even have more addresses. <laughs> no, uh, no. Uh, we ha we have uh, our database is quite is quite up to date. Most companies we know we have to to contact, not not for all the companies. So we, we do um, also phys physical uh, visits to, to companies. We talk to HR managers, to, to the salespeople, to, to the, the owners of the companies, etc. cetera. Um, I think um, the reason why, why they, they not always apply on us is uh, I think for uh, the main reason is there is lack of time mm. um, and in a certain way I can understand it because uh, the the production is on number one that's on top that's the most important thing um, in the whole business the the, the the printed works need to be delivered on time uh, so in a certain way I can understand uh, why they do not always apply on us uh, or other um, uh, suppliers yeah. so uh, yeah, lack yeah of I, guess, I guess i guess uh, they, mm -hmm. like you say there's always a, a sense of urgency uh, you know in, in in a production environment but still yeah. and you know that's one of my my favorite topics as well that it's uh it's strange to see that a com companies that invest uh, that much money uh and uh, and have to make well try to make the best of it and try to be best in class mm -hmm. uh, that you often see the things that you evoke here that when it's coming down to the their their their, their personnel or the staff then 
might like train the top guys maybe but then a lot of the the workers they're there to to put to to, to put out uh, the production and uh, i do agree with you that i think there's not enough awareness in in in, in companies that mm -hmm. the skill sets of of their uh, workers and their collaborators uh, should also be top of mind mm -hmm. uh, on, on that note i see that your colleague herman herman stars from Grafford just uh, gives a little note on the chat and he says well because Herman is also uh, uh, one of the colleagues uh, in Grafok and he says it depends on subjects that we that we trigger and yep. if we do research uh, we call out sometimes depending on subjects responses between 25 and 35 percent of return uh, of answers. I think it's important to, to mention or to say that uh, at Krafo, we, do, we, do, we don't say that people do not, that companies do not invest in their people. We don't say that. Uh, but of course, uh, the companies are, it's not an obligation to ask Krafo for, uh, for premiums. So uh, we don't know all the trainings that are happening in the companies. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are getting trained, getting well trained, but I'm also sure that a lot of people uh, need some extra training. If they, they uh, struggle on daily problems on, on their folding machine, for example, I'm sure they would be helped with, with some extra training. If it's one day, half a day, one day, two days, that could be enough to uh, to help them uh, so that they have less problems on their uh, folding machine, for example. So. Yeah. Yes, and uh, and what I, I notice, and I agree with uh, your comment and uh, Martin's comments. Uh, what uh, what I notice, it's uh, often it depends on the profile of the owners. Uh, it's true that our uh, printing industry is a, a victim of uh, its uh, long past, and I notice that the new profile of new entrepreneur, often younger and um, who do not come from the printing industry are better able to understand how uh, to train their staff and and why it's so important that's one of the reasons why we believe that uh, uh, hr is very important in our companies uh, most of the companies are less than 10 people so hr keep it simple as we always say but if you have uh, larger companies, uh, I think that HR, uh, in, in, in a simple way, of the way you companies, keep it keep it very basic, keep it simple. But a uh, way of uh, HR to um, is is very important in a company, and a new generation is is coming up. Uh, so companies need to be prepared of another uh, mentality in, in of the the new. Uh, work with any company. Yeah, and then we have here uh, another another chat from from Harriman. He says a uh, minority of our companies have HR departments, which means that companies do not always have time to implement HR policies. Uh, sure. So sure. I think in general, it means maybe, maybe I'm not sure that the mindset also within a company should maybe go also from the fact that I'm not generalizing here, but mm -hmm. that they don't have to always have to see staff as like a production commodity and that one should think that in the near future, I think they'll play a way bigger role because of knowledge levels increasing uh, and they will be depending more, I guess, on the automation, but also on the staff that is able to understand what's going on in the factory with that automation. And so the challenge, I guess, for, for anyone who's looking into smart factories, industry 4.0 uh, and automation in general, is, is to find these people with the right mindset and the attitude that you're sure. referring to. So I think that's very yeah. important and it's big time uh, that companies also be aware of this even if they are smaller 
like Herman is saying, they don't always have an HR policy, so Ooh. they might better start thinking about one. The minority of, of our companies has a, an, an own uh, HR department. That's that's really the the minority, and in a certain way, it's it's I can understand that. But uh, what he also mentioned is uh, do do not always have time. It's 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 the same problem. Time is the the key word th I think in in uh, this whole discussion. But but I'm sure if they use uh, companies like uh, like Rafok or even other companies, they will uh, gain some 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 time, some effort, some money. So it's an advantage to to work with uh, with some partners. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, so Eve, uh, maybe do you have another another question for uh, for David, or maybe some insight from uh, from your point of view uh, in, the, in the French uh, French industry? Uh, uh, do you do you in France, for example, have this type of initiatives from let's say semi governmental uh, aid, like like subsidizing yes. Uh, yes. education or, or trainings? Mm, yes, okay. currently in many during this context. Um, it, our government and um, try to help a company um, to uh, profit of the profit to this period to train their staff and uh, uh, to give facilities in order to uh, uh, to um, uh, find modules oh. and that the reason I had a question about e-learning uh, or mm -hmm. different type of solutions. Uh, also, I, oh, I share really your your point of view and what's really, really important it's, uh, uh, to find the, the right attitude, the right mindset uh, in order to uh, approach uh, this new concept of uh, 4.0 and it's true that uh, uh, technological uh, uh, issue and automation uh, will have an impact of the uh, of the, the task of the operator of tomorrow. But uh, what uh, the main issue will be how even for uh, for the owner, either for the uh, the leader managers uh, to to find the right skill and the right uh, attitude uh, to uh, to discuss about this subject and invite solutions. Thank you very much. So, uh, so maybe Morton, uh, just a quick question for you. Do you think discussing all of these items? Because of course, like in Scandinavia, like all over Europe, wherever we'll have all we'll have the same, we have the same problems. Uh, do you think that, like the federations, maybe Intergraph, do you think they have a, play, a role to play uh, in, in like maybe facilitating the, this uh, this problem? Um, the funny thing is that um, um, in this little close close uh, community that we're talking with right now. <laughs> you you uh, can ask uh, if if organizations like Intergraph and some of the federations uh, become so self sufficient that they don't really see the forest for all the trees. Right? And uh, I was just about to say that, for example, if you look at Intergraph, uh, they are like an umbrella organization for all the federations of printers in Europe. But uh, and their main and their main subjective is to be um, uh, lobbying towards uh, the European Parliament and 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 the, everything that goes on in Brussels, basically, right? And I can give an example. They last year they had a, a application to the European Union where they were looking for funding to fund a project about how to educate uh, young people to get into the uh, understanding uh, the values of being members of the printing industry. And, um, you know, it's kind of funny that, that this project that should, in my opinion, take place regardless of funding from the European Union or, or not, because all the federations in Europe, they have the same interest in making our industry attractive to the young mm -hmm. people as well. So whether they play a role or, or they don't play a role is very much, I think, independent from organization to organizations across Europe. For example, 
I know that the, the, uh, there's two organizations in the UK, like federations. I think that one of them is very active. I can't remember which one. I think that uh, we got in Denmark, we got a new uh, president as DO a couple of years ago, uh, really active and really progressive in how the organization works. But in Norway, they are one and a half person. Uh, so how should they be able to do anything, basically, right? So I think that that the industry needs, uh, you know, you guys know that we have been talking that in, in multiple occasions is that the industry should take a higher responsibility for our own uh, knowledge building. Uh, webinars is one platform, seminars another platform. Uh, using Graphog is uh, definitely also uh, something that came to my awareness about uh, something that should be used way more. And that was why I was asking before, because if the industry and it starts with the printers, it starts with the employees, it starts also with the vendors. If they are not interested in educating this industry and participate in really proactively endorsing uh, organizations like Grapho, I, I think we are, I think we have big problems. And, and uh, I think that the education is a key to, to understand. Uh, and we are, as this week has proved, we have, we are moving into 4.0. And if this industry doesn't educate and get on that level, I think think it will be difficult to mm -hmm. be attractive for young ones. I think it will be difficult to be, be, be keep relevance to the to our end customers. To be honest, mm -hmm. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, I agree. Totally mm -hmm. okay. So, uh... Yeah. So I think that the, if if I should conclude on anything, it's like. Uh, and that is my biggest concern, also from an English perspective. How do we make the print owners click on the films that give them the knowledge or open the magazine? And and I think the reason why I was criticized by the trade media is basically because I said, you are on the vendor side, you are not on the printer side. And that's why nobody wants to read your magazines anymore. Yeah. And I think that is still a fact because, well, you, this, this uh, event here has also proven that it's not so much about machines, right? It's not so much about uh, the newest internet technology. It's about the mindset. And the mindset comes from education and understanding how people work with each other. Of course, utilizing the technology available. But if the industry doesn't want to take that path and, and if the trade media don't want to participate in that route, if the vendors and the federations and the print owners don't participate in this, uh, in this journey, it will be quite tough for them, to be honest. Yeah, I, I don't want to uh, generalize it for all the companies, but... No, 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 no of course not. No, Just saying a few. I'm, I'm not saying everybody. You yeah, know, there are a lot of companies who are doing uh, great, great work on, on offering trainings to their people. 100%. Uh, have <laughs> HR management, etc. But for the other, uh, other companies who are maybe not, not that, that big, uh, it, it can be an advantage if you, if you use the knowledge, the network that we have, and uh, also very important, um, it's almost for free. Maybe that's the problem, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have a lot of knowledge, we have a great network, we have a lot of, a lot of contacts, uh, we have a lot of experience, so they should be well. It well, seems that we will not be unemployed, the, the four of us, right? We will have a lot of work yes. in the future to keep pushing the, the boundaries, right? And as said, so, we, uh, we created the channels, and so we're, we're happy that we could uh, get you on board here uh, for uh, to give Graphic also a voice on, on this platform as well. Wonderful, so, wonderful. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. much. Very interesting. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, David and, and Herman. And, okay. Um, so I'll, I'll give the final word to, to Morten. Thank you very much. Um, uh, this is the final session of this week. Uh, I have been listening to all of the sessions uh, in English, to be honest, from from Monday till today. So uh, my butt hurts. Uh, my head is full. <laughs> I look forward to get home and get a gin and tonic uh, together with my wife tonight. And uh, and uh, then I look forward. I actually look very much forward to download all the, the, the sessions in the weekend, uh, trim them, um, make some inkish graphics on them and make sure that we can have them ready for replays next week. Uh, I think uh, everybody who has participated in this have been extremely well prepared and very open minded and, and very willing to also share their knowledge. And I think that's part of the, I think that maybe is for me the most important part of industry 4.0 that we are moving into uh, 
collaboration and openness in a degree that I think even the printing industry has not been in for the past uh, 20 years at least. And I think it can take a lot of people, if they want to, to the next level. So uh, I want to thank everybody for, for being part of this week. Uh, we haven't had as many uh, uh, live attendees as we wanted, but I'm certain that the replays will be very valuable content for uh, everybody. And uh, for those who are listening into this, uh, we plan to have subtitles in, um, in uh, French, uh, German, Dutch, Spanish, Portuguese, uh, and English for all the sessions. So we'll, the, the films will be published next week and then the subtitles will come along as our translation team have the hours to do this because there's a lot of hours here. Mm -hmm. But uh, thank you and uh, Ivan Schack, uh, my dear colleagues and friends uh, from uh, English France and Benelux. Uh, so great to get to know you this way. It can't yes. be better for me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Martin. See you all soon. See, bye -bye. See you soon. Yeah, let's play the... the